This is Vilchok's famed 75mm F1.2. It's like getting, well, rice crackles instead of rice crispy. It looks similar, it tastes similar, but costs a lot less. So in this video, I'll be showing you a lot of sample images, including some actual wedding portraits that I've done only a few days ago. And of course, through my brick wall tests to tell you how good the optical performance is, if you're a geek. And my name is Jimmy Chang, and you're watching Red 35. You should know me by now that I'm always intrigued by affordable Chinese lenses in this channel. Photography is getting more expensive, and these Chinese lenses really does help to keep your expensive hobby or even profession alive. Look, I'm not the type who chase for technical perfections. Picture that tell story matters more than pixel sharpness. Of course, expensive lenses are great and a showcase on what you can buy if you have the budget. But in this particular case, would you spend three grand on Nikos 85mm f1.2Z or this Viltrox 75mm f1.2 for 450 quid? Of course, price is one thing. And still, I won't recommend a lens if it is, well, simply crap. So I break it down as my usual review and see my rating at the end of this video. And if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe so you won't miss any of my future reviews. Oh, one more thing. This Viltrox 75mm is designed to be used on APS-C cameras, so it won't cover the entire full-frame image sensor. It's almost a tradition now for most Chinese lenses I review in this channel. This Viltrox, well, is built like a tank. The barrel, the focus, and the aperture rings are all metal. And I like just how they implement the aperture ring. Well, yeah, it feels like the real deal. But make no mistake though, the ring is driven by wire, and there's no physical connection to the actual aperture blades inside the lens. Focus ring is silky smooth, but it's one of those spin forever rings that I really hate using. And there's absolutely no feel to, yeah, when you hit infinity with this ring. A manual cut system on the Olympus or OM system lenses is way better in this regard, especially if using manual feature for filming. But in terms of build, I really can't fault this Viltrox 75mm 1.2, and it really feels, yeah, definitely more expensive than it is. And I would even say it feels as good, if not better, than Fujifilm lenses. Better still, believe me or not, this 75mm is also fully weather sealed although not rated, but at least you can trust this lens on a daily basis. The only thing that aren't and cheap feeling are the, well, the lens cap and the hood. While the 75mm is not as heavy as the Nikkor or my old Canon 85mm 1.2L, but at just under 700 gram, this is certainly not a light option. With a diameter of 87mm and 101mm in length, it, well, it's pretty compact for its size, but still big for a mirrorless camera. But it does feature that massive 1.2 aperture, and it is designed to suck light into this lens and also burn a few calories while you're using this lens to create stunning images. That said, this lens is best suited for a body with grip. I used it on my ZFC and I find it to be a little tricky to hold at times. Adding a small grip like the one I'm using here, this small rig ZFC uh, kind of bracket handle thing really does help a little. But still, you will find it more comfortable with a proper built-in grip such as the Z30 or the Z50. I already mentioned about the Spin Forever Focus Ring, but aside from that, I can't fault the operation of the lens. There's a dedicated AF MF switch so you don't have to dig through the menu. And that electronic aperture ring, when combines with the retro looking ZFC, you really get a killer photography setup with all the controls you need for the perfect exposure. All visible and ideally placed where your hands and thumbs are. This is just really it took a long time to find 
find what I was looking for But when it did, it all fit together It took a long time To see what was in front of me And I can't lie, no matter how I try Now, crunch time. Perhaps what you photographers all want to see, just how much image quality can you buy for 450 pounds? Well, just consider that this Viltrox 75 mm 1.2 is one sixth of the price of the Nikkor 85 mm 1.2. I know that's a full frame lens, but there is no APS-C version from Nikkor at time of making this video. And if you want something that is ultra fast for portrait and a prime lens, you would need to suck up the price, sell a few pints of blood to buy it. So while I don't expect this Viltrox to outperform the Nikkor, I'm curious and I want to see just how good it is for the price. Central sharpness is excellent even at 1.2, but what shocks me is the sharpness consistency through the entire aperture range. You won't gain much by stopping down or lose much even at smaller aperture settings. Diffraction isn't really a problem and still usable even at f16. And really, I mean all to see such performance from Viltrox. And edge performance is, well, equally impressive. And I'm not joking here. And I can't distinguish between f2 to f8. f1.2 and f11 does have some softness, but you will need to well, really study hard and look at side-by-side -side comparison to spot the differences. And again, f16 has a slight diffraction, but I will have no problem using the image set at this temperature. Really impressive. A medium tele lens with an ultra large aperture can only speak of one thing bokeh. Yeah, <laughs> I must say, Viltrox has impressed me hugely so far, but as a visual artist, I also weigh highly on lens character and rendering. And that being said, this 75mm 1.2 has pretty and creamy bokeh balls with 11 blades. Yeah, you get pretty decent looking balls at smaller settings too. Don't forget that. Bokeh quality does have a direct impact on the draw of an image, even when stopped down. And for that, I must congratulate Viltrox for achieving one of the best looking bokehs in this price range, compared favorably against options that cost a few times more. In terms of draw, I can rate it as high as one of my all-time favorite portrait lenses, the Canon EF 85mm f1.2L Mark II. And sadly, that I no longer have the lens, but I can say that this Viltrox has a very familiar yet different character. It's organic without being too clinical, too digital. Nice one, Viltrox. This is an easy part for the review. Aberration is non-existent to start with, showing just how effective those ED and high refractive index elements are within the lens. Another thing I love is the lack of distortion. There's absolutely zero in this case, 100% optical, and you don't need any lens profile to achieve such a feast. Flare on the other hand, well, a little excessive. If you somehow position the lens at a certain angle under direct sunlight or a strong light source. The lens hood does help a little, but I managed to block off some of those flare with my hand. And well, that suggests that the lens hood just isn't deep enough. So if you want to block off some of those flare, it's better off getting a deeper lens from third party and you'll be good to go. This Viltrox 75mm 1.2 is a, well, fat boy <laughs> with some heavy and large glass elements. So it is not the fastest focusing lens I've used. It is, however, faster than the even fatter and heavier Canon EF 85mm 1.2L Mark II that I mentioned before. But I don't bank on it for any fast moving objects. Viewchart also ensures that the 75mm 1.2 is fully compatible with Nikon's subject detection. It works very well with face and eye detection 
as well as, well, animal detection that's on my services menu. And overall, I'm impressed, really impressed. Viewtrox 75mm 1.2 is also designed for, well, some moderate video use. It has some useful features that makes any videographers happy. Things such as dedicated AF MS switch, a declick switch for aperture ring, and of course, the accurate and silent AF motor. However, you need to accept that even with these features, I will only use this on a very specific situation. First, AF speed isn't fast enough for gimbal work. And second, menu focus is not great or smooth for video with no tactile feedback. Or even lens-based stabilization makes it really hard for serious running gun filming. There you have it. My first impression on Viewtrox is very positive, and I hope to review more lenses from them in the future. But what's my verdict on Viewtrox Pro 75mm 1.2 for Nikon ZFC for APS-C cameras? Should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or just go ahead and buy it? Well, I would say go right ahead and buy it, despite some quirks for video use. It's a capable, very well-built ultra-fast medium tele lens with a price that scream bargain into those gear prices and with performance that can rival some of the more premium and traditional offerings. One interesting thing is, this Viewtrox doesn't cost more than other premium Chinese manual focus lenses. And this Viewtrox has a high chance to be on top of my three selections for this year. Yes, it is that good. If you don't believe me, just read other reviewers that say about the 75mm 1.2 on the Fuji X mount, and you'll see why. This Nikon Z version is new, but it is the same optical formula, so there is no difference in image performance. So that's it, folks. Do you like what you saw? Let me know in the comment section below on how you feel about this particular Viewtrox lens, or if you've had unexperienced with other Viewtrox AF lenses. Please let me know. <laughs> Thanks again for watching, and you know what to do now. Thumb if you like this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with your awesome photography, filmmaking, and of course, yeah, lens review. Peace. Welcome to my bonus section. Yes, I am genuinely impressed with Viltrox 75mm 1.2. Yeah, it is, you know, quite, quite heavy and quite chunky on the ZFC. You know, you do really need to add a grip to it to, you know, to hold it properly. Otherwise, uh, you know, the ZFC ergonomic is not really great for big heavy lenses like this. Uh, it's okay for smaller ones and uh, I mean, just like this one, which I'm also reviewing the uh, TT Artisan 27mm 2.8, which is actually quite tiny as you can see. And uh, yeah, but anything bigger, like heavier and faster with 1.2 apertures, yeah, it's gonna find it a bit awkward to use. Uh, but you can see the image quality, you know, some of the sample images that I took at a wedding. Uh, yeah, unbelievable. You know, this is for the price. It really cannot argue. Uh, like I said in a, in a video that um, one of my favorite portrait lenses of all time uh, was the Canon EF 85mm 1.2L. Uh, that lens is slow, it's heavy, you know, it's just not having the greatest ergonomic, but the image quality, oh, I, I just love that draw. This has that very similar feeling to it. Not too clinical, not, not just ultra sharp, just like some of those uh, uh, high-end uh, uh, Leica lenses, maybe perhaps even like, like I said, you know, Nikos 85mm uh, lens as well. So this is not as sharp as that, definitely, you know, but it's sharp, it's, don't get me wrong, it's really, really sharp, just not as sharp as those lenses. But overall, I like it, I like it more. You know, you can sharpen a little bit in pose, you know, but I just like the natural draw of these things. It just reminds me of the good old days, the good old film days and analog days. So it does match well with the character of the ZFC, right? You know, I want it to be retro, I want it to have that film looking feeling when I take images, and really this will give you that plus, plus, the bonus is that working aperture ring. Brilliant. You know, like most of, I would say most, I don't know, I'm not a Nikon man, but if you know, if you let me know, I don't think any of the Nikon lenses have an aperture ring like this. And uh, uh, so this is cool. You know, I would like to see more uh, Nikon lenses have an aperture ring like this. And, you know, that means I don't have to 
put the dial or, or touch the dial to change it. I can just, you know, just do it the old school way just by changing the aperture on the lens itself and I can shoot right away. Uh, this is great. I love it. Anyway, let me know in the comment section below and see what, uh, whether you like these other lenses. I know Viewtruck does other uh, prime lenses for the set of C market. Uh, I mean, the APS-C Nikon cameras and also Fuji Films. And uh, so, you know, it seems they're a bargain. You know, they, they are good. I haven't tested the other lenses. Maybe they are as good as this one. But for this particular one, yeah, it's great, especially for the price. Anyway, thanks again for watching. And remember to subscribe and like. And I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.